Tonight recognizes Linda's 30th year of service to the town. And I'd like to present this to Linda. Thank you. All right. A quorum being present, the meeting will come to order. Uh, first thing, we'll uh, stand to salute the flag, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. To either of the constables of the town of Brookfield and the county of Worcester, greetings. In the name of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, you are hereby directed to notify and warn the inhabitants of said town qualified to vote in elections and in town affairs to meet at the elementary school, 37 Central Street, Brookfield, Mass., on Friday, the 15th day of June in the year 2018 at 7 p.m. Then and there to act on the following articles. And you are hereby directed to serve this warrant by posting the attested copies thereof at the town hall and post office in said town seven days at least before the time of the holding of said meeting. Hereof fail not and make due return of this warrant with your doings thereon to the town clerk at the time and place of the meeting as aforesaid given under our hands the 7th day of June in the year 2018, respectfully submitted selection of Brookfield, Linda Lincoln, Clarence Snyder, Beth Coughlin, a true copy attest Richard Lapierre, Constable Town of Brookfield. Pursuant to the within warrant, I have notified and warned the inhabitants of the Town of Brookfield by posting attested copies of the same at the U.S. Post Office on June 7, 2018 at the Brookfield Town Hall on the same day seven days before the date of the meeting as within directed and as signed by Richard Lapierre. So that's taken care of. Uh, first, business. Uh, do we have people that are non-registered voters in here? That's okay. I can keep track of that. All right. Um, a couple of comments here. Um, people wishing to speak should line up at the mic. First time you speak tonight, would you please give your name? After that, we're set to go. Um, people in the front, I think you all have, well, you don't all have name tags. So if anybody in the front is speaking that doesn't have a name tag, would you please identify yourself? Um, I will recognize you. Um, and please direct your comments to the moderator, uh, and then I'll try and get you an answer if you have a question. Uh, the people in the back of the room, when it comes time to vote, I need you to stand up and move behind the last row. Get yourself up, except for the registrars, and the registrars, just make sure you raise your hand when the counter comes around, and we'll take care of that. Um, <coughs> housekeeping things. When someone says they're gonna move the question, that is a device to end debate on whatever's being discussed. The way we do it here is if someone at the mic moves the question, and there are three people standing behind him or her, those three people will speak. We lost the mic. We lost the mic. The mic's out. It's back. How's this? Yeah. 
I no longer have my teacher voice, so I can't do this for three hours without a mic. <laughs> um, so if someone moves the question, people that are standing at the mic will get to speak. Those two, three people, whatever there are. And as soon as those two or three people are finished, then the person that moved the question, he, he waits for his second and we move the question and we take a vote on whether or not to end debate. Um, let's see, anything else? No, I think that takes care of that business. So before we start, um, do the selectmen or the advisory committee want to make any opening statements? Yes, I okay. <clears throat> we begin tonight with 58 articles that we could not reasonably believe that we could make our way through each article and allow time for discussion and decide the outcomes. We are faced with the most significant challenge in not having Department of Revenue sign off of our town finances. The most recent audit being incomplete required the current fiscal team of our new accountant, treasurer, tax collector, and assessor to research and reconcile reconciliation of accounts all the way back <clears throat> excuse me, to fiscal 14. As you might appreciate, we look at fiscal 19 budget, researching four years of records has taken far longer than expected, even with the hiring of consultant resources. You will note that in the FY19 budget is listed a sum of 16,000 to complete the last audit, an audit through FY18. It is the recommendation of the Board of Selectmen, Advisory Board, and Capital Improvement Committees that the audit be accomplished in each of the next three years. For these reasons, we ask your patience as we move through the articles. We have received suggestions on how to approach the situation with the DOR. We plan to act on the FY19 budget and many of the non-funding articles tonight and to adjourn and reconvene the meeting until 6.30 p.m. Thursday, June 28th where the remaining funding articles will be addressed. It is believed this will allow significant time for the DOR to review the documents requiring their certification to enable the town to move forward into FY19. Again, I thank you for your patience. Anything from the advisory committee or? On page one of your warrant, you'll see that we done a, a sort of a status of town finances with uh, explanation of levy, levy limit, state aid, that sort of thing, total revenue budgets, and then also total expenses, the excess levy capacity, um, and then key factors that are, are, are driving some of uh, uh, the issues on the budget. And um, uh, appreciate you reviewing that. And then also, I just wanted to uh, point out that um, all the articles have both the selectmen and the advisory uh, recommendations on it. And if you go to, the, to uh, the end of the articles, you will note there are uh, recommendations from the Capital Improvement uh, Committee as well. Just moderating. Uh, one addendum, and Steve, I don't know if you brought the numbers with you tonight. Uh, there, there was some uh, adjustments to the figures that uh, appear on the advisory committee's uh, front page. There was a, a, a little bit of uh, cross wires with regards to sources for those numbers. And what did you come out? Did you want to share those uh, incremental adjustments with the with the crowd tonight? So your, your levy limit, the 2018 plus 2.5%, 5, 5 the number should be 5,321,754. The new growth is conservative, $50,000. This is a, uh, uh, a number we got from the assessor. Um, and then the... Um, so we're, we're calculating a total levy limit of 
$5,455,987. And the rest of the math sort of adjusts following that. So your excess, your excess levy capacity, you can pretty much put one in front of it, and it's a good number from the standpoint of understanding where we stand with regards to the overall. So if you basically, if you add a one in front of the excess levy limit, you're you're close to the right number from a standpoint of, of where this budget takes us vis-a-vis -vis the overall raise and appropriate available. All right, before I get into this, um, the, the comments that Mrs. Lincoln made about the adjournment and stuff, we will need to vote on that before we before we leave tonight. Um, so it's not a done deal, but that's, she talked about the plan and we'll see what happens. Okay, Article 1, to see if the town will vote to accept the annual report of the town officials as printed or take any action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator? Yes. I move that the town approve the annual report of the town officials as printed. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. And those opposed, no. Approved. Article 2. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate such sums of money as may be necessary to defray the expenses of the town for the ensuing year or take any action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator? Yes, sir. I move that the town raise and appropriate such sums of money as may be necessary to defray the expenses of the town for the ensuing year. As shown in the fiscal year 19 budget, the advisory committee recommendations as contained in the annotated warrant. All right. Uh, for those of you that have the booklet, if you would turn to the back of it, um, you'll find a line item budget back there. I will read the title and the recommended amount. If you would like to discuss that, please say question. We'll leave it that simple. You don't have to go to the mic for this. And Michael and I will try and keep a record or get it correct as to which ones are questioned. Um, when we finish, um, we'll take one vote on all the items that were not questioned, and then we'll go back through item by item um, all the ones that are questioned, and we'll take votes on that. As we go back through it, um, the number in the book will be the starting um, the starting point. So if you want to amend it to read um, $5,000 for the moderator's salary instead of 50, um, you, you need to say that. And if you want to make it read zero instead of 50, you need to say that. If you're just going to leave it at 50, you don't need to say anything when you get up to question whichever one it is. Okay, so here we go. Moderator salary, $50. Selectman salary, 6000 Selectman, administrative assistant as wages, 43630 Selectman, municipal clerk's wages. 11,291. Expenses, 9,000. Physical exams, 800. Payment in lieu of taxes, $850. Computer maintenance, 17,000. Town website, 6,000. Computer security, 2,000. Consultant expenses, 10000 Computer acquisition, 5000 <coughs> CMRCP, $950. Cable access, $2,220. Reserve fund, 25000 Town accountant, wages, 46800 Question. Accounting clerk, $3,690. Professional services, $1,000. Certification, $1,000. Expenses, 
Town audit, 16,000. Uh, advisory committee, clerk salary, $513. Committee expenses, $500. Warrant booklets, 1,200. Assessors stipends, 1,500. Assistant wages, 46,972. Clerk, 11,009. Consulting services, 1,000. Expenses, $8,415. Uh, treasurer salary, 33,970. Consultant, 6000 Assistant Treasurer Wages, 19137 Payroll Services, 5500 Expenses, 9500 Tax Collector Salary, 43776 Certification, 1000 Expenses, 9400 Software, 6,860. Legal services, 65,000. Uh, treasurer, collector, tax titles, 10,000. Town clerk, salary, 32,874. Assistant wages, 4,182. Expenses, 2,600. Election and registration wages, 5,740. Election and registration expenses, 6,000. Conservation Commission clerk wages, $915. Expenses, $400. Central Mass Regional Planning Commission, nothing, I guess. That was earlier. Um, is that right? Nothing? Correct. It yes. was earlier. What's that? CMRPC on the for on the So this is dupl this is a duplicate of that other one? Yep. Okay. Point zero. Planning board clerk wages, three thousand seven hundred and eighty two. Uh, salary, two thousand five hundred. Expenses, 2,790. Advisory committee clerk salary? Yes, sir. Hey, should I question line 35? Wait. Okay, but I, I don't want to keep going back uh, to this. We need to pay attention as we're doing this. I'm reading them pretty slow. 35. Any others? All right. I'm at six, item 61 here. Board of Appeals, wages, 858. Expenses, 510. Municipal custodian wages, 14380 uh, Municipal property maintenance and improvements, 10000 Town hall improvements, 15000 Municipal properties utilities, 3498 Printing of town report, 1800 Municipal heating fuel, Five thousand five hundred. Okay. Municipal diesel fuel, twenty thousand. Municipal gasoline, twenty six thousand eight hundred twenty. Police wages, full time, two hundred thirty two thousand forty seven dollars. Police chief salary, seventy two thousand one hundred eighty nine. Part-time wages, 64532 
Clerk wages, 11705 Overtime wages, 48000 right, Expenses, 58966 Fire Department, wages, 47499 Fire Chief salary, 3634 Expenses, 34000 <coughs> Certification, testing, 11500 Utilities, 8900 Repair and replacement of assets, 15000 Telephone, contract leases, 6500 Was there a question on that one? Okay. Uh, building inspector salary, 16849 Assistant wages, 544 Expenses, 100 Gas and plumbing inspector salary, 4172 Assistant wages, 347 Inspector expenses 550. Uh, wiring inspector salary 4,142. Assistant 357. And expenses 400. Mr. Moderator, my apologies. Uh, question on 103. Which one? 103. Why 103 gas and electric uh, inspector expenses? Gas and plumbing. Or uh, gas and plumbing. <coughs> Uh, let's see, where was I? Zoning enforcement officer, uh, 7,392. Expenses, uh, 380. Emergency, emergency management, uh, 3,500. Uh, salary, 431. Blackboard Connect, 3,700. Animal control officer salary, 6,076. Assistant wages, 683. Expenses, 2,000. Parking ticket clerk and hearing officer stipend, $250. Parking ticket expenses, $100. Tree warden expenses sixteen thousand forty dollars. Shade tree expenses two thousand five hundred. <laughs> Nothing for school salary. School committee salary, 1,500. Regional committee salary, 1,000. Regional school assessment, $1,606,609. Transportation, $77,968. School expenses, $3,067,233. Highway, uh, superintendent wages. 56,842 operator wages 84,029 um, overtime part-time other wages 5,487 administrative assistant 19,319 uh, Police detail flaggers, 3,570. Seasonal worker, 15,222. Expenses, 60,600. Certifications, $930. Bridges, rails, and signs, 1,600. Utilities, 8,000. Snow and ice, 75,000. Street lights, 12,500. Cemetery wages. Yeah. 
cemetery wages, uh, 18167 Superintendent salary, 5313 Expenses, 6000 Improvements, 1500 Uh, Board of Health salary three thousand seven hundred sixty four. Clerk wages five thousand eight hundred twenty four. Agent seven hundred three dollars. Animal inspector salary one thousand one hundred fifty nine. Title five administration five hundred twenty two. Expenses four thousand. Transfer station wages. 25,689. Transfer station well test, 12,789. Transfer station expenses, 92,770. Question over Question. here. Community health program, $950. Council on aging outreach worker, 1530 uh, Tri-Valley, $799. Medicare, $2,000. Council on Aging Expenses, $1,400. Director of Veterans Services Salary, $1,056. Veterans Agent Salary, $3,695. Expenses, 240. Casework, 55,000. <coughs> Library director wages, 41,691. Custodian wages, 7,346. Assistant wages, 32,138. Saturday's holidays vacation, $3,669. Expenses, $13,200. Uh, heat utilities, $1,800. Books, videos, periodicals, $26,500. Recreation Commission expenses, $8,100. South Pond Beach expense, $1,250. Historical Commission, 1,155. Memorial Day, 3,286. Cultural Council expenses, 8,866. Fire truck is paid for, I guess. Police station. Um, Mr. Martin, Prince I, I'd like to, I realize there's nothing on Line 191 and one line 92, but um, they're, they're, I'd like to put a hold on that just to, there, there is a correction in the uh, 17 and 18 columns that is worth knowing about. Police station, um, 1,100, no, $115,000. Uh, police station interest forty thousand. Sawmill pond principal seven thousand five hundred fifty nine. Sawmill pond interest two thousand nine hundred ninety. Worcester County Retirement, $275,263. Question. Unemployment insurance, $14,000. Group Health and Life Insurance, $510,000. Medicare, Town Share, $54,166. General Insurance, $145,000. Water Department. Commissioner's salary, 1845 Clerk wages, $11,697. Um, superintendent's salary, 
59,594. Secondary operator wages, 5,467. Temporary help, 2,692. Expenses, 31,700. Uh, EMS, wages, 187,465. Question. And expenses, 42,000. Okay. Okay. So, I am going to go back through this and tell you the ones that I've got circled, and hopefully that everybody's going to agree on that. So, and I have a different, uh, different sheet, by the way, so that's why I'm turning different pages and whatnot. Uh, the first one I have is eight, uh, selectman computer maintenance, uh, 16, town clerk wages. What did I say? Oh, town accountant wages. I'm sorry, Michael. Uh, 23. Advisory Committee Clerk, 33, Treasurer, 35, and the Treasurer, 44, Legal, 77, Municipal Heating Fuel, 85, Police Overtime, 103, Gas Plumbing Inspector Expenses, One thirty-six highway wages, administrative assistant. Uh, One forty-four snow and ice. Which one? I believe one forty-four is supposed to be one forty-five. Oh, is that correct? One forty-five. Yeah, no. I have both marked as well. Hey, they're gonna talk up there. They're gonna talk a lot loud. Did someone question? Did someone question the street lights? Yes. All right. Mr. Chafee's point is well taken. Sixty-one. Um, One sixty-one. Transfer station expenses. And as we get near the end, uh, one ninety-one, one ninety-two. It was a police uh, fire truck uh, police station? Was that yes. questioned also? Yes. Yeah. Okay. One ninety three. Got on a roll right there. Uh, One ninety eight was the county retirement, and then the final two emergency squad wages and expenses. All right. So, I would take a motion at this point to approve all the non. Questioned items. Second. 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 Good. Okay. Motion made and seconded to approve all the non-questioned items. Any final comments? No. Good. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Okay. Now I did not write down names of who who questioned things, so we'll just do whatever and get ready to come up to the number. Eight, Selectman, 17,000. Good evening, Dave Holcraft. Um, I got a question, let me see here. I got a question, it's um, last year it was 17,000, and now it's 14,000, but the percentage says, if I'm reading this right, no, 17, okay, but th there's an increase of 400 and 446, am I reading that right? <coughs> what is the, uh, why is there a change on there? No, I'm reading, no. Who wants to answer his question? I'm reading on the percentage, there's, there's quite a difference on the percentage. Somebody, somebody want to explain the budget yes. for the computer maintenance? We, um, 
we're going to defer to the Board of Selectmen for this. Um, this has to do with upgrading the entire internet system and also the, uh, the maintenance of it and, and personnel involved in it. So I'd like to turn it over to them. Yes, we have, uh, we, we have now, okay. We have to have somebody on staff now uh, to maintain the server. And we went out to bid, and this is the lowest bid that we did. We had three different bids, and this was the lowest one that came in. And we have a whole new website. Okay, so that's why there's quite the increase. Okay, yes. that's, that's my question. All right, thank you. And, any other questions on that? No. Okay, so there's the motion this stands at seventeen thousand dollars. Do you have that motion? Second. Okay. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed no. All right, we got that one. Um next one I have is town accountant wages. Hi, Mary Lou Knight. Just a question for clarification. I'd like to know the accountant's scheduled hours and the hourly rate. Okay, who wants to? Account, account is currently at 30 hours per week at $22.80. 88 cents. $22 and 88 cents per hour, currently. And what's the new rate? Uh, we're going, we'll, we'll, we'll answer that in a different way. I'm trying to stop. Let's see. Uh, during the budgeting process, a question was came up as to whether the current rate was sufficient for uh, retaining the appropriate skills and experience in the position. Uh, the advisory board did some research of uh, comparable positions in towns similar to Brookfield, and it indicated there was a possibility we may be low compared to them. So our approval was such that we increased the budget. We have not increased the salary we, or wages. We have increased the budget to allow the personnel board sufficient financial headroom to take any action they deem appropriate after further investigation of this matter. Yeah. All right, the way, the way I'm seeing this is uh, on this line item, she's getting uh, a $200 a week increase. That's how I'm reading this. I mean, I don't know what, that's, that's how I'm taking it. Um, also, the, there's nobody here from the accounting office. I mean, what's up with that? Um, I'm, I'm appalled that we don't have someone from the accounting office here today, tonight. We've got a lot of issues in this town, and this is one of them right here. Right here is one of them. And a $200 in, a week increase, something's wrong here, along with our finances, since somebody answered uh, about the $200 a week increase. Mr. Moderator, if I may? Yes. <clears throat> uh, Dave, as you know, we have no right to approve an increase in pay, um, especially something like that. Again, I just reiterate what, um, what Tom said. Um, she came in to see us, brought a lot of uh, supporting paperwork, and uh, all we did was free up money so that after the step and grade uh, is done, the planning board has room to move in whatever direction they need. This isn't, this isn't a pay increase for her. It's, a, it's an increase in the line so the money is there should the planning board act. So she's, I'm sorry, my, 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 my sorry, personnel board's my man. So that's all it is. It's just, it's just budgeting the money to be there if it needs to be. Well, I think you're putting a uh, cat before the horse here, don't you think? Just to, to, to uh, no. absolutely. No. So, so I think one one reason to do this is to have the headroom, depending on what the the consultants come back from the Collins Center, because if we don't put the money in the budget now, what will happen is we'll we'll have to come back and go through. The, the whole process again, okay, which there are some people that would say that would, that's, that's to the benefit. The, the flip side of it is, say for instance, that we're, we're trying to hire for positions in the future and we put a hold on the, on the treasurer's office for that reason right there, 
without having the room to make a decision depending on experience in certain roles and positions, it puts us in a much weaker position to get the right person to no longer have the fiscal issues that we have in this town. We spent, we bring people in, we spend some time training them and then we can't retain them because we're out of line from a standpoint of where our wages sit vis-a-vis -vis other communities that are surrounding us. So this is one step to, in order to frame out the space in the budget so that we can bring in the right people for the right jobs. There, this probably needed to happen on more lines, but we don't have the report back from the Collins Center yet. Uh, but this will at least allow us to have the room that when we have that information, we can go ahead and, and look at the right adjustments at the right time in the right positions and we'll already have preserved that space within the budget. The um, experience isn't there with with our town accountant and neither are the hours being worked and it's proven here again with no certification of cash. And I don't want to hear that the, the books haven't been reconciled since 14. The, our finances have been in a mess for quite a while. Two years ago before we had, we had uh, free cash and things were a mess then. And this is two years now with no free cash. Things are not getting done. Thank you. Pat Washburn, uh, I, I understand what you're saying, Beth, but on, on uh, retrospect, we can't anticipate um, increasing someone's salary because of the other towns that are, that are around us. Everybody's demographics are different. There's more businesses in West Brookfield than Spencer and Sturbridge than there is in Brookfield. Our tax base is based on that. It's not based on what other towns are doing. That's number one. Number two, uh, I understand that the town accountant hasn't certified our cash in two years. We're behind the eight ball. Why will we give anyone any more money if we're already behind the eight ball and they're not performing now? When's the last time you did a, a performance evaluation on them? And when's the last time you reprimanded them and found out and got a timeline from them as to when they are going to get our cash certified and when they're going to get these punch lines that need to get done in town done? So before we talk about giving someone a raise, how about we talk about them getting their job done in the first place? Because right now they're not doing it. So I have a motion to, you know, let's make a motion not to raise and, and level fund it. Second. <laughs> All right, the motion, the amendment now is to fund it at Thirty-five thousand seven hundred, which was what last year's was. So discussion on the thirty-seven thousand five hundred. As of today, the town accountant is getting paid twenty-two dollars and eighty-eight cents per hour. On July first, the town accountant will be paid $22.88 per hour. The town accountant will get paid $22.88 per hour until the personnel board, along with an analysis of her, uh, of, of, of the position is taken and and then, yes, valid consideration of her. I'd like to correct you. Wait, 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 wait a minute, let him finish, don't interrupt. Okay. Okay. Um, the research we have done has gone through towns such as, and I'm just going to rattle off a few, um, Auburn, Massachusetts, $33.70. Boylston, uh, $43.94. This is the hourly rate for town accountants. Barry, Massachusetts, $24.58. Uh, Paxton, $3108. Petersham, $33.33. Princeton, $30.50. Spencer, $35. Sterling Mass, $34.63. Um, uh, there's a variety, and some of these towns do compare with ours. Others do not, we realize. Um, again, the, the, this, this allows uh, um, us, the, the personnel board, the, uh, the, uh, <clears throat> the ability to, um, the headroom to uh, attract correct personnel or keep personnel. 
Let me correct you in that. The only way that she will get an increase is if we vote tonight to give her an increase. If we level fund her, if we level fund her, and we level fund her budget, she does not get an increase. So if the, if the account gets level funded, then there would have to be room in her budget in order to give her an increase. But if we level fund her and you, and you calculate her salary out at $22 an hour, she would get paid $34,250. So if we're raising her, her, if we're level funding her, even at that, she has very little wiggle room beyond the 30 hours a week that she's already working. So we couldn't, we couldn't raise her that much if we level fund her. We couldn't give her that much of an increase. And if she's not performing, why would we give her an increase to begin with, is what I said. <coughs> Okay, the discussion is on the amendment. Um, any other? Okay, the, whoops. Uh, James Cook. I agree with you, the salary for a town accountant is low, okay? But the towns you cited, Steve, are way, their tax bases are double or triple our size. I think we probably do have to raise the salary, but before we do so, we need to come back to a special town meeting with a proposal. So I'm going to say I'm going to support level funding it, although I see your point. <coughs> Trudy O'Connell, um, my understanding is that this is not a vote to raise the wages. This is an hourly position. It is not a salaried position. If it were a salaried position and we were voting a line item, yes, it would be a raise. But it is a wage position, an hourly position, which means that in order for it to change, it must go through the personnel board and the board of selectmen to be approved. Any change in number of hours, any change in hourly rate must go through that process. So by voting more money, we are not voting more money for this particular person in an hourly way. We are voting more money in that account so that should there become a need through the study of the personnel board and the board of selectmen to change the rate of this position, the money will be there. And it, my understanding is that the, the studies are being done currently and so therefore we don't have the information yet about what the appropriate uh, hourly rate might be and it will come at some point during this year. And to have to come back to town meeting and discuss it again, rather than have the personnel board and the selectmen be able to do their jobs and uh, give the appropriate hourly rate at that point, would be, it would be silly not to, to have the money in there. So um, I would support the money that is in there um, with the understanding that it is not a change in hourly rate. Um, and it will not be a change in hourly rate or a number of hours worked until such time as the personnel board and the board of selectmen approve same. Thank you. Mr. Robin. Thank you. Um, thank you, Trudy. That's exactly correct uh, and very well explained. I also wanted to point out real fast, um, the accountant, I don't believe, is here tonight. But, uh, you know, coming up in front of the town and saying that she's not doing her job because we don't have free cash, I, I feel that's unfair to her. This is a long process. Uh, it, it takes a long time. We're at the mercy of the state. We have been for a while. So until everything is done, until all the all the reconciliations are done, there's four years worth of reconciliations. I believe it's about 500 things that weren't that, 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 that didn't add up. So they have to find and correct every one of those things, one thing at a time. So you know, I, I just wanted to say, I, you know, I, I understand where everybody's coming from. I do. I, it's 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 just to have that net in, in case the personnel board makes the move. That's all it is. But to, to say she's not doing her job is not fair to her. It's it's the state we're waiting on. So everybody understands. Don Taft, I think that was an excellent uh, explanation. Uh, move the question. Second. Okay. okay. Motion is made to second it to move the question. So all of those in favor of ending debate on the amendment. Um, to 35,700, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. Okay, so debate is ended. So now we're discussing the 35,700. <coughs> okay, all those in favor of 35,700, say aye. Aye. All those opposed, say no. No. That clearly didn't pass. So, um, the amendment is defeated, so now we're back to um, 
46,800. Mr. Moderator. So some if anyone in back didn't hear that, I'd like to make a motion for forty-six thousand eight hundred dollars. Second. All right. Any any new discussion on forty-six thousand eight hundred? If not, all those in favor of the forty-six thousand eight hundred, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. No. That 46,800 passes. All right. Um, did I have um, advisory committee clerk salary on here too? Yes, yes sir. Mr. Moderator? Yes. I would like to make a motion. Steve, identify yourself. Oh, I'm sorry, Stephen Comtois. Uh, for line 23, I make a motion for the clerk's salary at $500 even. Second. Motion made and seconded to change the line item to read $500. Mr. Moderator? You want to say anything, Steve, while you got there? Or? Oh, well, just traditionally, we've gone over this with several clerical positions. They're more of a, I know the word, it's not like to be been used uh, by Betty, a um, stipend position. We generally, traditionally, do not give an increase to those positions. And that's what you see right across the line. You'll see it for decades, the $500. Mr. Moderator, if I may? Yep. Um, I'm just wondering why you didn't question the accounting clerk, the assessor's clerk, all the other clerks that all have raises. Mr. Moderator, those are salaried positions. Again, not the uh, stipend positions. I served on the advisory committee. I believe I was a uh, clerk and received part of that stipend. I'm very, very aware of the two different. M Mr. Moderator? Yes. Um, I think the what may be causing some of the confusion was that uh, the advisory committee's, uh, I'll call it a, organizational clerk it usually comes from within the body of the advisory committee. Uh, this year's advisory committee uh, contracted outside services to do their minutes and such. So this is not the clerk, the bylaw clerk, but is an additional municipal clerk that's a, a seasonal like per diem person. So Mr. Moderator? Yes. I still stand on my motion. I, I, I believe it's a, it's a position that we've traditionally paid $500 for, and it should maintain that $500. I think every board has that situation, school committee, ZBA, right on down the line. OK. Uh, any? Yep. How much did the advisory board spend this year on clerk salary? We have not yet reached the 500. I don't have an exact number for you. It's, it's 300 plus that. I don't have an exact number for the uh, how much we've spent. It's, it's, we have not reached the $500 level. Yeah. Given the experience this year, would you anticipate, uh, what would you anticipate spending next year? Would you change the position in terms of how many hours you'd be looking? Um, this position was filled on uh, I, early March. Uh, we were meeting once a week since then, um, and uh, typically we were meeting once a month throughout the rest of the year. So from July through January, we meet once a month. Uh, based upon just exactly that, yes, there would be, we would need additional money there. Yes. Okay. Uh, I, I would just say uh, I thought the advisory committee worked incredibly hard this year, and uh, and having a clerk makes a huge difference to a board. Uh, I think we should leave this um, salary, uh, such as it is, uh, in place, not not reduce it. All right. Any other discussion on the amendment to move it to five hundred? Okay. All those in favor of moving it to 500, amending it to read 500, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. No. Okay. Mr. Moderator? Yes. I'd like to make a motion to leave it at $513. Second. 
Second. Okay. Motion made and seconded to have it read five hundred thirteen dollars. Any dis any other discussion? No, I'm just uh, waiting my time okay. for another question. All all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. Five hundred thirteen dollars. Mr. Moderator, while uh, I have your attention, um, and I believe this might be through through the moderator to the advisory committee, I'm not noticing any line items. There should be two for the ZBA. Board of, board of Appeals Wages and Board of Appeals Expenses, 61 and 63. Microphone. Board of Appeals, Steve? Is that, was, was that the I, question? I believe you're the Board of Appeals. Yes? Yeah, it's uh, item 61 and 62. There it is. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, now back to 33, I hope. Okay. Who had the question on the treasurer's salary? Clarification. Okay. Again, we are now looking for a treasurer. Should we not have the same flexibility to pay a going rate rather than what we are currently paying? Mr. Moderator? Yeah. Yes. Um, the Board of Selectmen had planned to put a question on this for that exact reason, uh, cited by uh, Ms. Knight. So we'd like to, to, I'd like to propose an amendment to that uh, line item that we uh, fund it at $46,800 as well. The, the amended to 46,000 even? Is that what it was? 800. Six, 800? 46,800. All right. Mr. O'Connell. Uh, I'm uh, just looking down a couple. The uh, Would you, uh, I raised a question about the assistant treasurer. Is it the board's plan to change that position if you pay the treasurer, uh, this uh, hire a, a qualified treasurer? Um, and uh, would you then eliminate the assistant treasurer position or change the uh, amount of money in it? No, we're still keeping assistant treasurer. I don't think they can hear you in the back, Linda. What? Yes. Yes, we are going to keep it for now. Okay. Based on the Collins, when we get back the uh, information from the Collins Center, we will know more. I don't. Uh, can you say a little bit more about uh, what what you're looking for from the Collins Center? Okay, we got a grant from the, the personnel board. Got uh, two grants from the Mass Compact, mm -hmm. and one of them was Get so. Into the microphone. Well, don't right. say what you were thinking. <laughs> the personnel board got two grants from the community contact this year. And uh, one of them was to do um, a salary survey, and we were going over all of the job descriptions, and we were also going to have a step and grade. And so once we know that, then we will know uh, more on what we are going to give salaries. And they had interviewed everyone who works at the town hall to see just what their jobs are. Okay. And that's, we were hoping that would be here by the end of June, but we haven't seen anything as of yet. So we're hoping, you know, over the next few months we'll get that. Okay, thank you. And um, I would withdraw my question on, on the assistant treasurer with the comment that uh, I want to pay compliments to our assistant treasurer, Keith Arsenault, who's been doing a terrific job. No, Keith is our consultant. Well, he's your consultant. He's our, oh. No, he's our interim treasurer. Then. <laughs> Whatever he is, he's and doing he a great is, yes, job. Yes, he is. I, I compliment him, too. Keith has been doing an excellent job for us. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to Is this your first time up, Mr. Cook? No, it's not. Okay. Okay. You've been very quiet tonight. I, I have been. It's uncharacteristic, I know. <laughs> I would like to ask a question of you to ask the selectmen. Where do they get this figure of $46,800 for this new position of a treasurer? <laughs> I was using the same uh, interim wage survey information that was used for the accountant 
Okay. Can I make a comment? Um, here's, a, here's a problem I have with this. I, I, I actually think, again, that we're probably underpaying our treasurer, but I think it would be a better procedure if we looked into this and came back in a special town meeting with a number and an explanation. All right, any other comments? Okay, we're voting on amending the 46,800. No other discussion? If not, all in favor of amending to read 46,800, please say aye. Aye. All the opposed, no. No. Okay, so now the motion reads 46,800. Any other discussion? All in favor of the 46,800, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. no. Okay, that's, that's approved. Legal services, 65,000. Someone had a question on that. Mr. Moderator, I have a question to you of the selectmen. Um, what's the breakdown for the legal services last year? What do we spend the money on, particularly? Tax title, probably. Tax title. Tax title, and we have a lot of cases pending in litigation. Um, can I ask specifically how much we've spent on litigation against Mr. Holcraft? And the accountant's not here, so we'd have to turn the accountant for that, and she's not here this evening. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have a second question to the moderator. Have we looked into hiring or engaging another town council? No, we have not. Uh, can I make a suggestion, Selectman, that you do? I, I would not want to share the same town council as a neighboring town. I also have real serious concerns about the council you currently have, so. <laughs> uh, point of order. Um, I believe we passed over line 35. But we didn't vote on the salary. All right. Thank you. I've only been here an hour and I'm already getting tired. That's not a good sign. All right. He, he is absolutely correct. So the motion is um, assistant treasurer wages, 19137 any discussion on that? All those in favor of 19137, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Thank you, sir. All right, now, um, we're back to legal services. Uh, a, question, a question was asked about how much uh, this town has spent on me so far. I have different ways of, of, of how I figured this out. Right now, it's um, after this week, it's about 34,000, approximately 35,000. And we have just begun. So you can thank Clarence Snyder for that. Thank you. Mr. Moderator? Yes. Is there a motion on the floor for this? Well, it stands at 65 until somebody makes a motion to change it. I would like to make that motion to, I don't want to say a level fund, I can't find the light item, but to um, make, make a motion for the amount. Legal expenses for the 65000 that would be my motion. Okay, motion is made and seconded to change it to 55000 no, 65. What's that? 6-5. Six, six, oh, okay. As, as advised. And the only reason why that I came up, um, Mr. Moderator, is that um, as a citizen, I think I had the same opinion as Mr. Cook in regards to town council and abilities. But sitting on that side of the desk and working with people like Michelle and her firm, uh, anybody that's gone down to Boston and gone to that convention, the MMA convention, and see the team that they have that work for this town every single day, anytime we need them, they're there. I commend KP, I commend Michelle, I commend Pat, I commend all of them, and I, I strongly recommend that we stay with KP. Any other? Yep. 
in regards to KP, if I correct, they represent the town of Sturbridge. And given past history that this town has had with the town of Sturbridge, we've almost come to litigation with them in the past. I don't think it's a wise thing to share a council with a neighboring town. That's all. I think you want a council in case something were to happen, you're in a position to take action. That's all. Okay. Any other discussion? If not, all those in favor of the 65,000, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. Okay, that's approved. The next one I have, hopefully, is municipal heating fuel of 5,500. I have no idea who questioned it. Okay. Linda Purse, I was just curious as to why it went down so much. Everybody questions why it goes up. I want to know why it went down. Okay, if, you, if you'll notice, there are, are periodic appearances throughout this budget where you've got different department. Yeah, so, so 93, 142, 181. We've, we've broke the utilities out to the actual departments that they belong with. And that was split out based on the individual oil deliveries for the municipal heating fuel. So the budget is there, it's just in a different place. Any other questions? So the motion is 5,500. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. I did better, Mr. Taft. Um, 85. Police overtime wages, 48,000. Who was, okay? Chief, could you just give us a um, justification on the increase on the overtime? It went up about 20,000. I'll, I'll take that if you want. Make a motion that the chief can uh, speak at the town meeting. Second. So, All so those in chief. favor of allowing the, the police chief to talk, please say aye. 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 Oh, anybody opposed? No. You've got the floor if you would like it. Sure. Microphone's up here. And Can you all hear me without the microphone? No, yes, just the microphone. No, my bad. It's uh, contractually. Um, what, what they got was two years worth of increases due to the contract. Um, they got an increase this year that wasn't in the budget and they're getting an increase next year in the budget. But it also has to do with the way I fill the schedule, okay? Previously, um, I had two days, two eve shifts where there were two part-time officers on it. And um, if, they don't, if, uh, if they don't get filled with uh, part-time officers, I would just keep one part-time officer on it. But now per the contract, the full-timers have first right of refusal for those. So there's gonna be several more shifts that they're required, not required, but they're, they could possibly take for overtime as, as opposed to the past couple of years. Thank you. Any other questions while the chief is still up there? Mr. Yeah. Mr. Moderator? Yes. While the chief is now walking back to his, uh, you should. <laughs> Back to his seat. Uh, I think we need to give the round of applause to the police department and all the efforts that they've been doing. Any other discussion on the 48,000? Okay. All those in favor, uh, please say aye. Aye. And opposed, no. So it's 48,000. Um, Gas and plumbing inspector expenses. Is that the next one? Yes. I have no idea who had the question. Mr. Moderator, I yes. have a question. Okay. Uh, there were some. There's some mandatory training that the gas and plumbing inspectors have to go through, and and that amount is cost seven hundred and ninety dollars. Unfortunately, the the inspector did not get back to the advisory committee, which is why they had cut it back to five fifty. So I'm asking for their dispensation and I'm asking for the town meetings dispensation to go ahead and fund it at the level we need to to get get them to their mandatory training advisory agrees so the new number is 790 again or the num number is 790 plus 550 790 okay okay any discussion on the 790 okay all in favor um, 
changing it to 790. Please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. All right, we're set with that one. Next one I have is 136, Highway Wages Administrative Assistant. I think actually there wasn't a question. I think that when you read it, you read it as uh, $319 instead of 314 And I think that there was some rumbling because people said, oh, it's supposed to be 319 or four, That's supposed to be a nine, not a four. So I, that's what I interpreted going on. Now, maybe somebody else did have a question, but that's what seemed to happen. Any discussion on $19,314? No. I make that motion. And the motion's already there. Um, I want to help you. All those in favor of 19314, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Okay, thank you. Uh, snow and ice, 75,000. Who, okay? And having attended the special town meeting where we uh, voted uh, $50,000 in change uh, because of snow and ice overage, which is something we do every year. I question why we keep the, the figure at 75,000 uh, and, and would therefore move to a new figure of 100,000. Mr. Moderator? Yes. Um, I, I agree we always overspend it, you're right. Um, I, I think it was just a safe number that's always been used in case we have a very late winter because we always, it's the only budget in town that we that we approve deficit spending on constantly. So it, my understanding is if we, if, we, if we approve it at 100 and we use 80, we can never go back down. So that's why we don't go up. The, the reason I, I feel that we should budget closer to what the actual expense is, and, and I would understand Tony's point, except for we're always at least 50,000 over, if not more. Um, by under budgeting it, we affect our free cash every year. And it's important that we begin to have a more consistent free cash number. Our capital planning committee looked at this. Uh, we are low in our, uh, the amount of free cash that we generate every year. Uh, we need to be up around $450,000 a, a year of free, or $425,000 of free cash every year. And we're somewhere between two hundred and fifty and three hundred thousand dollars. And and by under budgeting snow and ice, we keep that uh, that free cash issue going. So I think we ought to address it up front and therefore um, hope you'll support this motion. Mr. Moderator? Yes. I I concur with, with Peter O'Connell on his his concept behind what we need to do overall from a standpoint in order to stabilize the free cash. But what I'd, I'd like to ask this body to do tonight is to support it at the $75,000 range because I think that the discussion around snow and ice needs to be a larger discussion about the policy around free cash. And what I'd like to see the town do first is, is get the policies in place about what our free cash goals are and even if it means we come back at the special in the fall and go ahead and make that adjustment to our budget, so long as we do it prior to the establishment of the tax rate, then we can still make that adjustment at a later date once we have a policy and how we're going to get to that free cash goal into place. And, and so I'd prefer if we put this off to a, a future date, preferably prior to us setting the tax rate, uh, I know we can't obligate ourselves to anything that, that happens after the closing of this meeting, but to just hold it at 75 for now, but to, to take that under advisement and make it part of the larger discussion. All right, we still have a... Uh, withdraw the motion then uh, in reference to the request. If somebody would withdraw the motion. Okay, we're back to 75. 5,000. Any other discussion? Okay. All those in favor of the 75,000 with the snow and ice account, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Okay, that's voted. Next one I have is the very next one, streetlights. Okay. 
Uh, Mr. Marder, I have a question as to how many street lights are currently funded in town? How many do we operate? Yeah. It's like 112 ish. 112 ish. Okay. Exact number. Any other questions? Okay, all those in favor of the 12,500, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. Okay. Uh, next one I have is over here. Transfer station expenses, 92,770. Good. Thank you. Well, good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm afraid I have some bad news. Um, we have some failing compactors at the transfer station. So what I'm going to be doing is asking for an additional $3,648 for the transfer station expense account. And um, that would increase this budget from the 92000 and change to $96,418. So that's what the additional rental will be for these two compactors that are in failure. Um, while I'm on that subject, we've got some other bad news, but um, that, that has to do with the fact that... Uh, our recycling costs have gone up dramatically. We're now looking at $84 a ton to recycle all our commingled uh, plastic cans, cardboard, paper, and so forth because of what's going on in, in the world of recycling. Um, however, we will be working within our budget with that increase. We anticipate that increase to be an annual cost of about $6,400. We've applied for a grant with the Mass DEP. They'll be helping us pay that. And again, we'll be working within our budget to, uh, to make that up. But I just want to make you folks all aware of that. So that being said, I would ask for your support for the increase in our budget. Thank you. Was there a, OK. Uh, the motion now is to amend that to read $96,418. Okay, so some discussion on that. Mr. Moderator? Yes, sir. Uh, I was just wondering, is that, are we going to rent them for a year for that additional money, or are we going to fix them, or are we getting used ones? What are we doing? We are renting these. Uh, to purchase these would be $40,000 a piece for a two-yard and a three-yard compactor. It makes sense for us to rent these because uh, Casella will come in and, and they do any work um, as part of a contract for no additional fee. It's covered in the rental. If the work's covered in the rental, why do we need more money? No, no problem. I'm just I, I'm trying to figure it out. I don't understand. Oh, sorry, you, you, you're serious? No, I'm serious. If, the, if, if they cover it under the contract, I was asking why we needed more money. That's what I was asking. Oh, we, are we own them currently? No, we are renting them. As well. Mike, I'm, I'm just trying to figure it out, man. I'm just trying to understand. I'm, I misunderstood. Are we good? No. Okay. Right. Because we rent them. Right. So they fix them at no charge because they're rented. No, the ones, the ones that are failing. The ones that are failing, what they're saying is, if the ones that are failing, are like, why, why are they covering? Uh, that's a good question. Um, because we rent them and they're, I don't have an answer for that. Mike, yes. can I try? <laughs> Please. Okay, so right now you have, currently you have compactors that are failing. Are they going to come in and replace the actual compactors themselves with newer units where the rental cost is going up? Yes, correct. Thank you. Are we good? Yeah. What's that? Could you let everybody know that we're taking a survey on the change in the tape? Uh, on the meeting? Yes, wait, remind me when before Linda makes a motion here. Um, well, let's get to finish the line items first. Uh, $96,418. Any other questions on this one? 
come up to the mic and uh, Bob Falter. Just a point of uh, information. When you're talking about everything being together, the, 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 that we're commingling or whatever the technical term is, has there ever been any thought for future planning that we actually split out everything by metal, paper, cardboard, and everything else? I had that similar experience in Maryland, and that's the way the whole transfer station was set up. And would that help us, by the way? Uh, the answer to your question is yes. We used to do that. Um, the problem is the tonnage fee would still be the same regardless. We could get other uh, containers to put those in, but again, we're paying for the weight. It still all goes out there to the same place in Auburn into the recycling. So it, it's just not feasible for us to do that. Okay, any other questions, comments on the 96,014? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Okay, that's a vote. Um, the advisory committee had wanted to make some comments on fire truck, I think, principal and interest, some figures. That Go ahead. So um, <clears throat> this is the uh, Excel spreadsheet. Pardon me, I made a mistake. Okay. Um, it does not affect everything I'm about to tell you. Ha has to do with the historical reference columns of fiscal year 17 expense and fiscal year 18 expense. So as you can see, fire truck principal, fire truck interest, and then you go into 19, we paid it off, yippee, okay? Um, it did not add in the spreadsheet to the bottom line, line number 197. So 197 should read fiscal year 17 expense 108126 $108,126. Fiscal year 18 expense on 197 should be 187 587 <laughs> That accounts for that entire column. This does not affect fiscal year 19 in any way. So the next two columns are, are accurate. You know, $215,550, $165,550 are correct. And then, the, you know, the difference, the, the, the final, I mean, the, the next column, the fiscal year 18 budget request compared to 19 should be $27,963. So there's a reduction there. So um, just a clarification, nothing more. It does not affect 19 at all. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next question is uh, police station $115,000 for the debt. Who? Okay. Um, all those in favor of the 115, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Okay. Um, next one I have is 198, Worcester County Retirement. 275, 263. Mr. Moderator, I actually have a comment in regards to this. That I actually want to make a request to the advisory board for next year. I think it would be very useful to us sitting out in the audience if we had a pie chart breaking down things like retirement, schools, fire, and police so we get a better idea of the big picture for those of us who are not on the advisory board to know what's going on in town. It would be very useful for next year. Thank you. Any others? All those in favor of the 275, 263, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. That's a vote. We'll be happy to, uh, well, Mayor, Ms. Murray, I'm happy to consult you directly, sir, on, on this matter. And while the ch chief is coming up to talk about EMS, um, I know what his question is, and he can propose a solution. Um, 
it's listed here as 187, 465, and 42,000. So if we vote those, we raise and appropriate that. Later on, there's articles 48 and 49, which also request a transfer of those same numbers over there. So, right, anticipating that's your question, give me a solution. Well, I know we're going to be acting on 48 and 49 after the fact, so they're being taken out of order. If the board want, if the board's in concurrence, we can take 48, 49 out of order now. We can just wait for it to follow the, the path that's been laid out. But that was the reason for the question. They couldn't be approved as part of the omnibus budget because... Are you, well, are you making a motion to take them out of order? You want to do it as part of your routine or you want to do it now? Okay. I'll defer. They've got a plan. We are doing them anyway. Okay. All right. Okay. So, so there's no line items for the emergency squad wages and emergency squad expenses will be taken up later tonight with articles 48 and 49, I think. Okay. That takes care of the line items. So. Now, moderator, don't we need to vote those items and then transfer the money in? We will. We will. It happens in the act. No, because if if we vote the items right now for the numbers, then we're raising and appropriating it. And then if you transfer money to the count, you're doubling the amount of money, which they might like, but <laughs> not going to happen. Okay. Um, <laughs> not if you can't find this place, you don't. Okay. Excuse um, me, Mr. Moderator. Back to... Can I just um, can I just say something from yep. Karen Reynolds? Um, I know you're not going to hear a lot of the articles tonight, but I make a motion or a request to hear Article 30. We have people here who won't be available for the June 28th meeting, and that's my request. Anyone seconded? Second. <laughs> Was there a second? I'll second. Okay. okay, thank you. Okay, so the question, the motion is to take Article 30, take Article 30 out of order and take it now. Okay. Article 30, you need to. Well, no, I think her motion was just that it didn't take enough time. Not that, it, that, it, that I guess she had heard it We good to go here? Okay. The question, so repeat what the motion was. So either take that up now or take it up tonight. Which was it? Take it up tonight. Take it up tonight. Tonight. Yes. I can add. Um, okay, I, I know how we can, uh, I will give you some advice when we, get through this thing, to how to handle that. Okay. Uh, now, before we go on, um, there was a little box in the back that had uh, a question if we um, essentially had the town meeting on a specific night of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, which night would you um, prefer? If you didn't fill it out, you want to fill it out, Make sure you check it off before too long, and if you don't care about it, then you don't have to go back there and do it. Okay, Mr. Holcraft, do you have something before I yeah, move what's, here? What's the um, number of the uh, article you're discussing right now? That I'm going to go to back to three, I think. 
Okay. Yep. Is it thirty? Yeah. I make I make a motion. Oh, that I'm we going to number three. Oh, okay. Okay. Article three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and actually probably ten. Yes. Uh, traditional articles um, that voted as a block. So if somebody has a motion down there, we can take care of that. Mr. Moderator. Yes. I move that the town vote to approve articles 3 through 10 as written in the town warrant, except that the phrases or take any action thereto be omitted. Okay. So article 3 is allowing the uh, treasurer to borrow money for the treasurer foreclosing on tax titles. Five, the selectman selling property. Six, selling obsolete material. Uh, seven, allowing the selectman to apply for grants. Um, eight, allowing Board of Health to appoint their own members to different positions. Um, nine is for an account that they have. And ten is for a dollar amount for um, a couple of uh, revolving funds. Does anybody object to any one particular of those that you want pulled out? Okay. If not, the motion is to approve Articles 3 through 10. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. And those opposed, no. Okay. Article 11. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of one dollar to plow private roads or take any action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator. Yes. I move that the town vote to raise and appropriate one dollar to plow private roads. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion on that one? Okay. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. Okay. That one's. Okay, number 12, um, to see if the town will vote to amend the Town of Brookfield Zoning Bylaw by adding a new Section 8, as written back down here, and I'm going to dispense with the reading, and we'll let someone make a motion. I'll try. <laughs> Mr. Moderator. Yes, sir. I move that the town vote to approve Article 12 and amend the town zoning bylaws as printed in the handout beginning with the words by adding section 8H and deleting the phrase or take any action relative thereto. So the new zoning bylaw will include a section 8 point 8H as written on the handout with the exception of or take any action relative thereto. So there's a playing before we before we start this, the planning board needs to give a report, which I think is on the way, and then we'll proceed. Uh, Sharon Mahoney, uh, chair of the planning board. Um, I just wanted to find some terms in this. A moratorium is nothing more than a pause. <laughs> in this case, a pause against accepting new permit applications for the business mentioned in this proposed bylaw, which would be recreational or adult marijuana establishments. And this would cover such businesses as retail sales, um, industrial, um, industrial farming of marijuana, or um, the processing of marijuana plants into such things as edibles, or smokables, or other consumables. And the reason that the planning board has asked for this moratorium is because we are looking at coming up with specific bylaws to regulate these businesses. And I'd like to give the town some background on this. There was a statewide referendum on whether marijuana products and marijuana should be, uh, production should be legalized in this state. Brookfield voted yes. However, that vote did not include a referendum on whether businesses 
that cover this product should be located in Brookfield. The purpose of this moratorium is so that the zoning, the uh, planning board can study the matter, can get up to speed on the state's statutes on these, which are still being determined, by the way, and have a series of public hearings and informational sessions to which the town will be invited so that we can hear what the town would like to do as far as the location of businesses that deal with this product in one form or another. I should also point out that because Brookfield voted yes on the statewide referendum, we cannot ban these establishments outright. However, the statute left it up to the individual towns and cities to establish any guidelines within reason governing the location, the hours, the, um, the acreage, whatever, of these businesses. So all planning board is asking is that we are given a pause in accepting such permit applications so that we can, in a comprehensive and studied and reasonable manner, come up with guidelines which will be incorporated into the zoning bylaws that would regulate these establishments to the satisfaction of the town and its citizens. And I'll take any questions that anybody has. We're going to take a 30 second pause here. <laughs> I'll answer that question. <laughs> I should have bought my water up. I had a dry mouth. So those that might be wondering what we were talking about, um, I wanted to make sure that the town clerk is satisfied with the wording that he's got here as the amendment, as the motion was read, um, so that we're all good to go, and he is. So now we'll take questions and comments. And Mr. Moderator, point of order, would I need to propose an amendment because the wording in this handout differs from the wording in the warrant? I don't have to do that. Okay, thank you. And I'll take questions. Because the motion that was read re referenced the handout. Um, how is it open to my stop? Sean Mulligan, I'm wondering if it's an open ended mor moratorium or how long this is for? Uh, it says on the uh, proposed moratorium bylaw that the moratorium will end either at the <clears throat> as of the 2019 annual meeting, a year from now, or at such time that the planning board completes the process of coming up with the zoning bylaw and puts it before the town and it is enacted, whichever comes first. Mr. Moderator, uh, do, you, uh, do you plan to, to be able to complete this before the town meeting next year? Mr. Robin, we, we would love to. We would love to. Um, I can't guarantee it, but it really depends on how much input we get from the town and what legal um, snags we run into, but we will give it our best shot. I, I'd, I'd like to make a couple comments now, if you don't mind. Um, if you look in the book, you see that the advisory committee does not support this article, and I want to explain why. <clears throat> um, these uh, restrictions that you want to put on this uh, really could, um, it, it could end up being that we don't end up getting anything in town. Uh, you know, we're a town that could use some revenue, some tax money. Um, you know, I, we have the same budget to, to keep fixing things every year, and uh, you know, we can, we can only do it at such a level. Um, this would be a great boost to our town, I believe. It, it would be a good boost to uh, to revenue in the town and tax and things like that. Um, I'm just afraid that if it's if it's held off for a year. It's, a, it's a, you know, I mean, it's something that was, it was something that the, the townspeople voted for and wanted, and now we want to hold it back for you to put restrictions on it. And uh, I don't know, you know, it didn't work out too well for medical marijuana in this town, if I remember correctly. 
Um, we, we can't open one anywhere, do we, can we? Uh, effectively, there is one location where we can. Currently, there is a solar array on that site. So that's but a no. The, well, right. theoretically, we still could. No. And it, well, you could tear up the field, I guess, yeah, and then theoretically. Yes. But no. <laughs> so I, that's what I'm saying. I mean, it, it's it, you all vote how you want to vote. I just think it would be nice to get some, you know, to, to at least have the option there for people to come in here and open this business if they want to and not over restrict it so they can't do it because that's probably, you know, in my opinion, is going to happen. If I could respond, yeah, sure, yeah. part of the process that we would undergo as a planning board to formulate these, this uh, zoning bylaw for this particular business would be to get, get input from the town as to what they consider reasonable restrictions. And again, I must reiterate, the statewide referendum was whether or not to legalize marijuana. The issue of where these businesses would be located is a land use issue which the planning board properly would address. And we can't do that until, unless we have time to make the proper considerations, bring the question to as many people in town as possible and get their input. Now, the issue of income is a valid one. However, if we just throw this open and there is no specific bylaw regulating the location of these businesses or the hours they operate or whether or not they can hold deliveries, then that means that one of these establishments theoretically could be put in at any point in town at any location. And there might be people in this town who would object to having one of these establishments in their neighborhood. We would like to find that out. And we would like to make some sort of accommodation via a zoning bylaw that would address these types of concerns. Um, my question to you, Sharon, is, is uh, what has what has the planning board done at this point to, I mean, the, the law has been into effect for how long now? I mean, you know, the law has been into effect for how long that, that uh, we can have legal marijuana? Has it been four or five years? Okay, so it's been two years. What has the planning board done in the last two years then to, um, you know, to come up with some kind of game plan? I need town council's help with this. Yes, Mr. Moder Mr. Moderator? Yes. I, I would like permission for town council to speak. Okay. Okay, all those in favor of allowing town council to speak, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, that's a vote. I, uh, before town council speaks, I just want to reiterate, a referendum was taken. That does not necessarily mean a law is in place yet. And I will turn the floor over to the town council. Thank you. Good evening, folks. Through you, Mr. Moderator. So the state law with regards to recreational marijuana was passed effective December 2016, but the actual state regulations that were promulgated by the Cannabis Control Commission, you may have heard of them, did not come out till March 15th of this year. And so as, as Sharon indicated, the law just continues to evolve in this area. And so, you know, it is, it is fairly typical. Most of the communities I've, I've had town meetings this year, they, if they hadn't already put in a moratorium, they are looking at doing that um, as part of this town meeting season, precisely so that they can develop um, bylaws that would, for instance, identify where they could be cited, um, what kind of permitting you want. Do you want a special permit? Do you want it to be as, as of right? Um, and those types of considerations. Um. I guess, Sharon, I'm not totally on board with you. If I wanted to open up a marijuana shop down where I am, which is zone rural residential, it's a business. So it couldn't be located in the rural residential zone, for one. Second, if I want to farm marijuana under state regulations, it would have to occur in a zone area in the town of Brookfield that's zoned for farming. So we already have some regulations in place. I think the other question that really should be addressed, and maybe should be addressed by the bylaw committee, is what fees should be imposed on a marijuana business. But I'm not sure I buy your argument because I don't think you can open a marijuana shop in a place that's not zoned for business. Mr. Kirk, strictly speaking, is incorrect. A marijuana business under the current use regulation table would fall under number 7A, which is other. Any business falling under 7A or use falling under 7A other requires a special permit. However, the special permit requirements are broader than the planning board feels they should be for this type of business given the controversial nature of it and the fact that there may be some people in town who don't want to see this type of business in certain areas of town. Now as to the cultivation of marijuana, 
My understanding, and town council, correct me if I'm wrong, it is not considered a farming activity, so therefore it is not a, a uh, it does not fall under the right to farm bylaw in this town. That's correct, it's, mm -hmm. not, an agri it's not an agricultural use. Mr. Moderator? Yes. Uh, through uh, the chair of the planning board and even through the admission, I, I believe you're the chair of the uh, bylaw committee, town council advisory committee, there's far too many questions. This motion that's on the floor is valid. This town needs to move this and let the planning committee, planning board, uh, deliberate some more. I would ask to uh, make a motion. I will make a motion to move the you, question. You have one person behind you. Yeah. Let him speak, and so stay right there. Unless you have a second to move the question. Second. No, he, let him let him speak. Wait a minute. I have a question to our town council, to the moderator. Go ahead. Has, the, has the SJC ruled on any of the cannabis control commission regulations yet? To my knowledge, there's not been a challenge. That's right. So this is still an emerging area of law. I, I disagree with you, Sharon. I, I think when this is looked at, there, <laughs> a lot of this stuff is going to follow under established law, although there may be some variances set. And the SJC will clearly get involved. But I happen to side with the advisory board. I think we need to move ahead with this. Excuse me, Mr. Conto, are you letting your motion stand? I do made and second it. Yeah, but that's not the way it works here. You have to remember, I don't accept a motion to move the question until everybody in the line has had a chance to speak. They've now had a chance to speak. Okay, the motion stands. Okay, we have a mo we have a motion to move the question. Second. Okay, so we're going to talk about ending debate on this question. Okay, so that's what we're going to vote on. All those that want to end debate are going to say aye. All those that don't want to debate, end the debate, are going to say no. Okay, all those in favor of ending debate, please say aye. Aye. All those in opposed to ending debate, please say no. Okay, so the debate is over, so now we go to vote on the article that's before us, okay? All those in favor of amending, the t this is going to require a two-thirds vote, so where are my counters? Um, all those in favor of, well, I don't think we're going to get a unanimous one. Um, all those in favor of ending of, of voting for the moratorium, please say, please stand up. And my counters are working their way from the back toward the front. You need a, you need a number. Okay, all those opposed to Article 12, would you please stand up? motion passes 58 to 14.